Matthew 27, verse 62. Amen. Thank you for those that are able to to stand for the reading of God's word. And aren't you glad we can honor the word of the Lord? Amen. Verse 62 says, Now the next day that followed, the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, Is it not amazing people's view of Jesus can be so skewed? I mean, here they're calling the God of glory a deceiver. We remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, that after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the tomb or the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He's risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto those people that requested this, You have a watch, go your way. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the tomb sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Or in other words, they put Roman soldiers there 24 hours a day to make sure no one came and stole the body, sealed the tomb so the seal couldn't be broken. Isn't it amazing so many people don't want to believe in him? If you really didn't believe in him, why would you go to all this extra trouble for him? So today, the Lord is having me preach on this topic. Sign, sealed, and delivered. Signed, sealed, and delivered. There's some of you in this room that the enemy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the I'm gonna give you just kind of the, the thesis statement. The enemy has told you you can't come out from where you're at. You've been put in a grave. He signed off on your life that you're going to die with your depression, your anxiety, your fear, your sin, your habits, and your problems. It's been sealed, and he's put a watch over your life saying it can never happen. But what he forgot about, he may can sign it, and he may conceal it. But God's the one that delivers. I said it's God is the one that delivers. Jesus, these next few moments, I just pray, Lord, that people would not see me, but they would see the one that makes all the difference in the world, and that's you, God. You alone are worthy of praise and honor and adoration. I pray, God, today that the word of God would touch every heart. They, they would feel your presence today. Uh, truly, you are the one that's alive. Uh, and we magnify you and give you all the glory and the honor today. Uh, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness uh, and your grace and your mercy today, God. Uh, and, Lord, move in a powerful and a mighty way today. Uh, and everyone say in Jesus' name. Before you're seated, turn and tell somebody, today's not a good day for you to preach long. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well. Praise the Lord. So glad each of you are here. Now that you're here, buckle up. You're in a Pentecostal church. Amen turbulence ahead <laughs> my wife and I were flying back from Hawaii here a few months ago and uh, uh, my wife and I we when we hop on a plane we have one desire sister Bonnie that's get there safely and coming back from Hawaii she had doubts <laughs> amen I mean that plane felt like it was going to come apart at every seam this turbulence over the ocean is I mean probably halfway there it's a long flight and boy, she, she was a nervous wreck until those wheels finally touched down. Amen. You're in a safe place today. If there's turbulence, we're going to land. Okay. Amen. 
How many knows that Jesus knows how to tug in your secret places of your heart and make you a little nervous sometimes? I've been there many a times. And so if the Lord begins to talk to you and deal with you, just act like he's talking to your neighbor. Nobody will know. Yeah, praise God. We live in a world today that's full of fakery, full of looking like an imposter. Many in this room right now are going through so much turmoil in your world, your mind, your spirits, your finances, and you just don't want anyone to know really what's going on in your world. Amen. Some of you in this room, you keep so much stuff going on so God can't even talk to you. But guess what? God can talk through the noise. God can talk through the drama. He can talk, amen, through the, the drunkenness and through the alcohol and through the hobbies. You serve a God that has a clarion call that can speak anytime, anywhere, and any place to a soul. He'll talk to young people. He'll talk to adults. God can even talk to children, amen. God knows how to speak to us. Even people that don't want to listen, God can talk to because you cannot stop the voice of God in your world. Amen. I'm, I'm kind of thankful about that, Sister Elena. I'm glad that God knows how to lead me and guide me and, and direct me. Someone say, praise God. praise God. Jesus lived his life with a mission. The Bible tells us that his mission, Sister Jackie, was to seek and to save everyone that was lost. The trouble was, when he came to the earth, he found a lot of people that did not think they were lost. I'm amazed as a preacher, everyone thinks they're going to heaven. You go to a funeral, I mean, everyone's ready for heaven. Don't <laughs> Ask Brother Norris, he works there, praise God. Ask Sir Dean, everyone's ready for heaven. I mean, no one's lost anymore. But the reality is, people are living a lie. They're living behind a facade. And so when Jesus came, robed himself in flesh, Brother Isaac, and he came, amen, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Before God can ever save you, you have to first recognize that you need a Savior. God can't help you if you don't know that you need help. Amen. Well, I'm okay. Isn't it amazing when you, if you ever stumble and fall, uh, if you're a kid and you're on a bicycle and you, and you wreck it, the first thing you do and you, oh, I'm okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's just that instant reflex that you want to just jump up and act like, man, nothing happened to me. Or did anybody see that? Amen. Can I tell you, Jesus sees everything. Jesus knows everything about you. Amen. He was watching even last night, amen, the thoughts that you had. and the Amen. Whether he's going to even come to church today or not. He knows the thoughts and the intents of your heart. And so when Jesus comes, he comes to seek and to save the lost. How many knows that you're a sinner saved by grace? If you're either... Lost or you've been saved. There's only two categories in this room right now. And most people would like to think they're saved. But I, I know there's some people in this room right now that God's working on your salvation. And if you'll be open with God, amen, say, Lord, I need you. I need salvation in my world. He will in no wise reject you. In fact, he will draw you to him. Amen. 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 Praise God. I'm going to pick on my good friend, uh, Brother John, back there. Brother John was our fire chief for many years. It would be like a fire truck pulling up to the house. And you could tell it's on fire. And the homeowner come out and say, well, my house ain't on fire. They're thinking, well, there's flames coming out the window. Oh, not, that's not my house. Everything's good inside my home. And smoke billing out. I mean, it don't take a rocket science to figure out, wait a minute. Hey, man, the house is on fire. It'd be like going to, uh, to Roper's job, amen, and where Jerry and, and Roper work. And say, there ain't no leak here, and water shooting about the ground. Oh, just an artesian spring right in the middle of town. Wonderful. Yeah, that's how that works. No, I mean, can you not tell you, we do this spiritually. Ain't nothing wrong with me. And smoke billing out your house. Ain't nothing wrong with me. And water coming up in your spiritual yard. The best thing you can do is recognize when Jesus comes into your world, he's coming to do a work in your life. There's no need acting like there's no smoke and there's no water. 
God, I, I'm having a flood right now. Lord, my house is burning down. But I know, Lord, you can help me. Lord, if you'll get the fire truck, if you'll get the water repair, God, if you'll God, put some blood and some mercy and some grace into my life, Lord, I can make it one more day. Can I tell somebody today the reason he rose again is so you can rise again. The reason he went through pain is so you can live another day and not have to endure the pain and the heartache of sin. I've come to preach to somebody today there is hope for your life there's a future that God has for you hallelujah I want to tell somebody in this room right now quit faking it quit acting like everything's okay if it was you wouldn't have multiple relationships and I'm talking to a real world right now if everything was okay, amen, you wouldn't be taking all the medication you're taking right now to keep going. Amen, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not after your medication. I'm after you to be honest with yourself and say, God, I, I just need you right now. Lord, there's some things in my world that aren't going as like I would like for them to. And guess what? When you get honest with God, guess what God does? He'll start showing you how honest he can be with you and say, wait a minute. I was just waiting for you to realize you're living in a pig pen right now. Read Luke chapter 15 sometime. It was when the prodigal son came to himself. You know what the father did? The father stayed home and made sure the cow was ready and the robe was ready and the ring was ready for his finger. The father didn't go get in the pig pen with the prodigal son. He waited for the prodigal son to get honest with himself and say, wait a minute, I'm tired of stinking. I'm tired of the hurt. I'm tired of, I'm tired of looking like I'm okay when I'm not okay. And when the prodigal son got real with himself and said, I'm going back to daddy's house. He got out of that pig pen. He stunk all the way home. He smelled like a mess. But the moment he walked into his daddy's house, guess what daddy did? He said, wait a minute, you're home now. You're being honest now. I can work with you. I can fix what's going on in your world. Amen. Just trying to help somebody in this room right now. You don't have to live the way you're living one more moment because he's alive. The enemy has signed your death warrant. You say, how do I know that? Because the Bible says he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, he signed your divorce papers. The devil has. He signed your suicidal thoughts. The devil has. He signed your anxiety certificate, your fear certificate. He, the enemy has signed off that you're his. And there's no way out of where you're at right now. He signed off on that generational curse that said your grandpa was this way and your dad was this way. And so you're going to be this way. He signed off on it. I need someone to hear me right now. He has sealed it. And he's told you it's never going to be different than what it is right now. He has set a watch to make sure that you don't come faithful to church. He set a watch to make sure that you stay hooked to that drug habit, that alcoholic habit, that pornography habit. He's made, this, is what, this is what they did when they put Jesus in the tomb. They sealed it and they put a watch there because they, they wanted to make sure he can't ever come out of this situation. We watched him go in and we're going to make sure he stays there. I've come to preach to somebody right now. The enemy has got you in a bad place and he wants to make sure you stay there. He's put the right friends. He's put the right relationships. He's got the right addictions to make sure you stay in that dark tomb. But what you don't understand, it doesn't matter what the devil does. It doesn't matter what the enemy does. He can sign it. He can seal it. He can put friendships. He can put hobbies and careers. But when God decides to give you a deliverance, there's nothing that can happen when God decides to deliver you. Whom the Son has set free, he's free indeed. I've come to preach to somebody right now. You
You don't have to get that divorce. You don't have to die with that drug addiction. You don't have to die, amen, with that bitterness and that pain. There's somebody that wants to bring a deliverance into your life and can set you free. Amen. See, Brother Fuller, you, you don't know what you're preaching about. Oh, yes, I do know what I'm preaching about. There's some of you in this room right now. Your life is upside down right now. Right now. Amen. Some of you say, well, I'm not hooked on drugs. You're not even hooked on phonics, praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. You got your D-E-G. Amen. Or your G-E-D, praise God. I've got it. I'm doing good, preacher. I've got life by the tail. Then why can't you even smile while you're in church? You're in a place where Jesus loves you. Brother Fuller, I'm doing really, really good. Then why last night did you toss and turn all night last night as the Lord was dealing with you if you have everything you say that you have? Come on, somebody. I just come to be a preacher. I know what the devil's told you. It's signed and it's sealed. Amen. He ain't ever coming out of here because we're watching it. I know he said in three days he's coming out of that tomb. He ain't coming out. We sealed it, Brother Ballard, and we're watching it. And every eight hours, there's a new shift. Nobody's sleeping on this job. Can I tell you? They were watching Sister Anna. They were, they were making sure that the disciples did not come and steal his body away and just say, ha ha, yeah, he's risen. And it was just some big hoax, some big lie. But all of a sudden, about the third day, early morning hours, the Bible says an angel that looked like lightning came down so strong that it knocked the two Roman soldiers to the ground. They literally fainted under the presence and the power of God and the angel just rolled back the stone here's these two paid Roman soldiers they're knocked out colder hey man hey man I mean they're, they're just they're just they're just out like lights and all of a sudden the master of the universe said hey it may have been signed and it may have been sealed but I just got delivered by the power of God I'm coming out victorious over death hell and the grave oh hallelujah I've come to preach to somebody right now you're not going to die amen by suicide Side. You're not going to die by alcohol. You're not going to die by depression. God has a deliverance for you. I said Jesus has a deliverance for you. He can send that same angel. He can come and rescue you and pull you out. Amen. Amen. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. The same God that caused an earthquake. Hey man, now you you got to get this. This this death, burial, and resurrection stuff is so powerful. It's just amazing. Let's go to Matthew twenty-eight, brother Jackson. Hey man, verse number one. Is anybody excited today? You know why some of you aren't excited right now? You're in the tomb. I'm preaching to you right now. You know why you're not excited right now? You're in the tomb. Some of you, amen, your jobs got you in a tomb. Amen, your traditions have you in a tomb. Life has you in a tomb. Amen, the cycle of life has got you. It's it's dark where you're at. But I'm going to tell you, God knows how to send an earthquake to shake your world up, to let the stone be rolled away. Matthew 28, 1 says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they come to the tomb. It's kind of normal. Someone you love, you want to go back and visit the tomb. Pay last respects. Amen. Kind of a sorrowful time. The Bible says, And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. What looks like so impossible for you, that stone, that mountain that's in your way, It's so easy for God to push it out and he'll just sit on it. 
God, I, I could never live for you. I could never be faithful to church. I could never be involved. If you see my past, my pa- if, I, if I told anybody my past, I'd probably get locked up. If I told anybody my past, I wouldn't have no more friends. Are you kidding me? Every one of us in this room have a past. Amen. I'm talking to people in this room right now. God has his hand upon your life. God has a future for you. And you've locked yourself up with all the regret and the memory. I'm speaking to somebody right now. You have a call of God on your life for ministry. And you've buried it. And you've buried that call of God. You've buried that behind a tomb of regret and misery and shame. But God can roll that stone back and say, wait a minute. I'll just sit on it. I'll, I, let me show you how much power I have. I can sit up on that on that tomb I can set up on that stone the Bible says verse 3 the angel's countenance was like lightning his raiment was white as snow and for fear of him the keepers the Roman soldiers shook and became as dead men now let's picture this Roman soldiers ain't afraid of nobody Don't get close to this tomb. Ten feet back or we kill you. And one angel shows up. Like wet noodles. They're just shaking. They fall over as dead men. Can I tell you, one encounter with an almighty God causes your past to shake when it recognizes the blood of Jesus. One encounter, amen, with the true touch of God upon your world causes the enemy to fear when he recognizes uh, that person can be forgiven. That person can have a future. That person can have a hope. That person has a call of God upon their life. Verse 5, the angel answered and said to the women, fear not. Doesn't God have a humor? They're looking at an angel. Two guys fell over half dead. And now these two Marys are there. And the angel says, Sister Linda, oh, don't be afraid. Are you kidding me? Can you imagine if an angel walked in this room right now? Said, hey. Hey, Brother King, how you doing? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, woo. <laughs> I was doing real good till I saw you. Many times in the Bible, an angel would show up and say, fear not. Are you kidding me? Why did the angel say that? Because your natural reaction when you see something that powerful and that supernatural is to be afraid. You know how many people don't come to a Pentecostal church? They fear. God don't want you to be afraid. Fear not. God didn't come to expose you. He didn't come to get on to you. He came to get you out of your tomb. Many people won't come to a, to a church. They don't want to be around a preacher. If that preacher knows what I did Friday night, ooh, he probably does. I ain't going to come to church on Sunday. I'm going to live two weeks right before I show back up. <laughs> Folks, I'm no different than anybody else in this room. Let's God reveal something. What I'm saying is God is not after you to expose you. He's after you to get the stone rolled away so you can have your life back. Oh, hallelujah. I wish you could just do what I get to do. Amen. And see what I get to see. Amen. Sister Elena last uh, Sunday morning thrilled my heart. I don't want to embarrass you. Amen. She came down here. Last Sunday was our first Sunday here. She came down here right now. And Lizzie... And I was talking to her, and she's like, I just came down to give God praise for my family. All right? And we talked to her, and she had never received the gift of the Holy Ghost, but she wanted it. And guess what? We prayed for her, and God gave it to her. And she began to speak in tongues for the first time in her life. That wasn't hard for God. You see, God will do what, if if you get the stone rolled away, he's going to do a miracle in your life. If we get the stone rolled away, something powerful is going to happen for you today. Look at verse 6. The angel said, he's not here. (laughs) Now, Brother Ballard, I I don't know how all this happened. But these, these ladies are walking up. They're seeing this powerful angel. They're seeing two Roman soldiers I don't know if they're still shaking like dead men or they're just totally passed out. 
but they're going, what in the world's going on here? There's two Roman soldiers. They're, 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 they look like they're dead. The stones rolled away. That's not supposed to be. And there's this angel figure telling me not to be afraid. Am I going to turn off these two guys that are dead? Of course, they weren't dead. They, they just looked like they were dead. And then the angel says, uh, I know you came looking for him. He's not here. He's risen. Come here. I want to show you where he used to be. Hey, Mary, I'll go if you go. <laughs> you go first. I've got your back. <laughs> We're all brave people until, right? <laughs> I'll prefer my brother. <laughs> brother Dennis, you just go first. <laughs> Folks, God will put you in awkward situations sometimes. They go in, and they're going, oh, my goodness. He was here, but he's not here. I don't, I don't know what all they saw, but they realized something miraculous to Laura had taken place. Verse 7 says, go quickly and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead. And he's going before you into Galilee. And there you shall, you're going to see him. I've come to tell somebody in this room right now that you're on the verge of a miracle. I need, I need you to hear this preacher right now. This is not just a typical Easter message, but I'm trying to help somebody as God's helping me today to help you understand the world has got you pushed in a dark place. I know what I'm talking about right now. It's a dark place. There's so many people fighting depression and anxiety and fears and it's it's overwhelming people amen i'm just telling you the mental the mental societies of our world they're trying their best to help people and they're literally overran amen because their people are living in dark places that's why people are running to trying more hobbies and more sports and buying bigger homes and buying bigger yachts they're trying to find this void some people's divorcing their spouses they, it's the spouse issue i'll get another spouse only to find out that didn't and fix it. Uh, and, and again, I'm not being ugly. I'm just saying how the world's running. Let me try a different kind of tattoo, a, a different color of hair, a different wardrobe. Uh, let me try witchcraft or palm reading or Ouija boards. Uh, that's where our world's at. They're looking. How do I get out of this dark place? Uh, and when the enemy gets you there, you better hear this preacher. He will seal it and he will sign it. He'll tell you you're never coming out of this. This devil possession, you'll, you'll never be free from this. These night terrors, these nightmares you're having, you'll never be free from this. This medication you're on, you're going to be on for the rest of your life and probably even more medication. Because when you go back, you tell your doctor, doctor, it's not working like it used to. And all he knows to do is up your prescription. Am I preaching to somebody here right now? I'm just telling you, that's where our world's at. But I'm going to tell you, I don't care how many guards are at that door. I don't care how it looks sealed. All it takes is one angel of the Lord to come back and to roll back that stone and say, wait a minute, that's where a used to live that's where Roper used to live that's where Jerry used to live but come and see the place where he used to be he's not there no more he's alive he's well he's free he's walking with God I've come to tell somebody today it may be signed it may be sealed but just wait the deliverer is coming and help is on the way I said help is on the way hallelujah 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 oh praise God amen hallelujah amen it's so funny John chapter 28 verse 11 tells us what happened after the fact brother John it's crazy just like politics in Washington right now. The keepers finally compose themselves. Oh my goodness, we're going to lose our jobs. When we tell them what happened, they'll never believe this. Finally, they come to, they had one job, Sir Joe, and just one job. 
keep the rock over the hole. They come to, and that's not where the rock was. And so now, their tail kind of tucked between their legs, going back to the centurion they had to report to, hey, boss, we got good news and bad news. The good news is we'll turn our two weeks notice in two weeks ago. The bad news, the rock moved, and he's not there. You know, I'm paraphrasing, but this is in your Bible. You ready for this? Verse 11, when they were going, some of the watch came into the city. The people that were watching the tombs came to the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that, that were done. And when they, the people that on the watch, when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, we're going to pay you this money and when we pay you this money, we need you to lie. This is your Bible. Just like Washington, D.C. Amen. This is what, here's some money. This is what we need you to say. Tell everybody his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Tell them that you, you fell asleep. And when you woke up, the disciples are dragging him out of the tomb. Can you believe the Bible says this? I mean, this is, and then if all this comes to the governor's ears, if the governor hears about all this stuff, we will persuade him and make sure you're covered. That's in your Bible. Yeah. I, I can't even fathom that. Here are people that knew what they were doing was wrong. Verse number 15, so they took the money. And did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. It is a known fact among the Jews of that day. That guess what? Yeah, the disciples came at night. We, we fell asleep. And they come and took him. He's not really alive. You know why? The devil wants you to tell you today. You know what? That, God really can't help you. He's not really alive. He's not really big enough to fix all that in your world. No, that's for somebody else, but that's not for you. Amen. And he wants you to think that you can't have your, your, your life back, your purity back, your mind back. All oh, that's just hocus pocus. I'm telling you, the stone was rolled away. And God was raised from the dead. It don't matter what anybody else says. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Now, you ready for this? This is so cool. There's so many things that happened at the, at the uh, resurrection. In Matthew 27, verse 51, I'm going to share something with you that's going to blow your mind, okay? Now, for me, that's a small explosion. Amen. For you, it may be an atomic bomb. I don't know. But Matthew 27, verse 51 says this. When Jesus died, the Bible says the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks were rent. It was such a massive earthquake when Jesus died. It shook that whole region. Look at the next verse. Look at verse 52. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Listen to this. So when he died... This is a type of the resurrection. It didn't say there were just certain people that rose. It was saints that rose. See, if you're not living for God, you're not going to heaven. I don't care what anybody says. That goes for me too. So he dies, Roper. The humongous veil that was in the temple from top to bottom. <laughs> rips open. This earthquake is shaking that region. It's busting tombs open. Graves are being opened up. And while he's dying, saints are coming back alive. Look at verse 53. Very powerful verse here. And they didn't come out, out of the graves until after his resurrection. Now get this. 
he dies, graves are opened. Can you imagine the local New Jerusalem cemetery? For three days, there's open graves. But because Jesus was the first fruits, in other words, he had to live by example first. For three days, graves were open, but no one's living yet. But the moment he comes back alive, when his grave opens, now they come back alive. And they run back into Jerusalem. Can you imagine this? I mean, you just went to a funeral last week. Oh, oh, Aunt Myrtle. She is a good aunt. Folks, this is what your Bible says. And so, at the same time that Jesus is coming out, out of his grave... There's people running into Jerusalem and saying, hey. And nephew Johnny opens the door, and now he's passing out. Aunt Myrtle. Because when Jesus rose again, he was trying to send a message throughout all of Jerusalem that my resurrection is so powerful, it does not just affect me. It affects humanity. You better hear this preacher. What I'm preaching about today is way bigger than an Easter story. And about our little traditions to have fun with children. And I'm not, I'm not against all that. But I'm trying to teach you a principle. What happened 2,000 years ago is still impacting humanity. That when Jesus came out of that grave victorious. Amen. He was showing us. I can get you out of your grave just like I came out of my grave. It looked like mine was signed, sealed, and delivered. Here's what's crazy. An earthquake happened when he died, and it opened up the graves. It was an earthquake that rode back three days later that rode back. It was an aftershock that rode back his, his, his tombstone. I'm telling you, the aftershocks are still happening today where people are still coming out out of their sin, out of their bondage, out of their pain. God's still filling people with his spirit. People are still getting baptized in his name. Why? Because guess what? It's not just about him coming out. It's about you coming out of your tomb, out of your grave. Amen. Sister Fuller, if you'll come, I'm just about through. Amen. But I'm not finished yet. Jesus hears about a friend named Lazarus. Hey, and Lazarus was sick. Brother Jason, he's, he's sick. And the Bible says this in John, that Jesus didn't really have a desire to go heal him. In fact, he just kind of hung back, Chris, and waited till he died. What a friend we have in Jesus. And so after he knew that Lazarus had died, he said, let's go check on old Lazarus. And the Bible says, for he's sleeping. Well, the disciples, thought, well, if he's sleeping, that's a good thing. He's getting rest. He'll get to feel better. And Jesus said, guys, you've missed it. He's not sleeping. He's dead. Oh. So they stroll up to the house, Sister Joanne, and Jesus knew he was dead. He knew. In fact, they had done put him in the ground. They done had the stone over the opening. In fact, the Bible says he'd been there for four days and he was already stinking. That's what your Bible says. Whew. I wouldn't want to work in a funeral home back in those days, praise God. Mm. And so, in John chapter 11, verse number 20, the Bible says that Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met with Jesus, but Mary, she stayed in the house. Verse 21, Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. Lord, if you'd have got here earlier and fixed this mess, I wouldn't be in the problems I'm having right now in life. In it, in it, aren't we quick sometimes to point our fingers at the Lord? If he had done this or changed this or fixed that, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in. Verse 22, Martha says, I know that even now 
whatever you'll ask of God, God will give it to you. Jesus said unto Martha, your brother shall rise again. There's going to be a resurrection. She said, I know, Jesus, that at the last day there's going to be a resurrection. But that don't help me now. And Jesus looked at her and said, I want you to know that I am the resurrection. And I am the life. You're looking toward the future, but I can do it right now. Maybe I'm speaking to somebody. Maybe the Lord is speaking to somebody in this room right now. That you think, well, next Sunday, next month. Let me try AA for one more time. Let me try NA. I'm telling you right now, Jesus can deliver you. I'm telling you, you don't have to walk out those doors the same person you walked in today. Oh, Brother Fuller, it's Easter, and we've got plans. I'm not trying to change your plans. I'm trying to help you understand you can come out your tomb right now. It could be the best Easter you've ever had in your world. You could have a resurrection, hey man, in your world right now. And say, wait a minute, this has been the best family gathering I've ever had. Because I, I come out of my tomb. Hey Amen. So verse number 27, she said, Lord, I believe you're the Christ. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe in all that stuff. Verse 30, Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but he was in that place where Martha had met him. Verse number 32, when Mary, the sister, comes to Jesus and she sees him, she falls down and repeats the same thing that Martha had said. And said, if you'd just been here, my brother had not died. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews weeping, he groaned and his spirit was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? Come and see. Verse 35, here's your memory work for, the, for this week. John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. Memory work, you've, you've learned a verse, praise God. You're a good Sunday school class. Jesus wept. You know what Jesus was crying for? He wasn't crying over Lazarus. He was crying over people that did not believe that he could come out of the tomb right now. He was crying because there's people right now if the Lord came back, you would not go because you believe in the tomb more than you believe in the resurrection. And it causes the Lord to grieve because He knows there's hope for you. He knows there's peace for you. He knows there's promises for you. He knows there's eternal life for you. You realize He's reading your thoughts right now. How many like your thoughts just to show up on the screen right now? Dear God, it would change some of your thoughts in a hurry. Yeah. Some of your thoughts are going, I hope that preacher hurries and quits. Wouldn't you like it if it had like, you know, if it said, okay, like when you get text messages, it'll say who it came from. Okay, Joey, thoughts. Don, thoughts. All of a sudden, it'd be kind of a scary to all of our thoughts on that screen, wouldn't it? Whoo, hallelujah, amen. But Jesus knew their thoughts. Verse number 36 Then said the Jews, oh, how he loved him. Verse 37, some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused even this man that he would not have died? Now they're accusing him. This guy that could do all the miracles, he messed up here. I thought he's a true friend. Bible says, verse 38, Jesus therefore groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone was laid up on that cave. Can I put it this way? It was signed, and it was sealed. It was keeping all the stink inside. I don't mean to be rude here, but some of you are afraid to let God into your world because of all the stink that's in your life. It's messy. And you know... If God starts digging around too much, it gets a little uncomfortable sometimes. And you just soon, nobody know you got that spiritual cancer in your world. So you don't tell nobody. Verse number 38, the stone lay upon it. Verse 39, Jesus said, take away the stone. That's what repentance is in your life. 
when you start repenting for all the junk that you've done, it starts taking away the seal so the stone can be rolled away. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said, Lord, by this time he stinketh. He's been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew you heard me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that you've sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about the napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. I've come to preach to somebody in this room today. The enemy has signed it and he has sealed it. But God has come to deliver you from where you're at today. He's come to say, just roll that stone back. It may be an angelic host that does it, Mr. Sherry. It may be a praying church that does it. It may be you just saying, God, this is embarrassing, but I'm rolling back the stone. But when you do your part, God is going to do his part. I don't care what the, the lawyer says. I don't care what your drug dealer says. I don't care, amen, what your former spouse says. All I care about is a deliverer. What does he have to say? Amen. Signed? Devil thought he had you. Sealed? No one's taking you out of this tomb. But I've come to preach. There's a deliverer. I said, there's a deliverer. I said, there's a deliverer. I said, there's a deliverer. His name is Jesus. I said his name is Jesus. I said his name is Jesus. I want us to stand in this room right now. Hey man, I know it's Easter Sunday. It's only 1229. We're just about through. But there is no way and I could in good conscience today let the traditions of this day override someone having deliverance in their life today. These altars are open today for whoever would like to come and say, Jesus. I'm coming out of my tomb today, Lord. Oh, Brother Fuller, I'm not in a tomb. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, nothing stinks in my life. Oh, really? I just come to tell you today, there's hope for you. These altars are open right now for anyone that wants just to come out and say, God, I want more of you in my world. This is what Easter Sunday's about. It's about an empty tomb. It's about walking with you, God. Amen. To any of our guests, you're welcome to come. This is for whosoever will. You're not coming to join this church. No one's going to embarrass you. No one's going to try to make you uncomfortable. That's not how we operate here. We come to serve a risen Savior and a risen God. Amen. To the saints of Truth Church, I encourage you to come and pray right now. I encourage you to come and pray right now. Uh, God, I'm coming, Lord. Uh, God, it's been signed, it's been sealed, uh, but I've been delivered by the blood of God. Uh, I've been delivered by the blood of God. <laughs>